Hello everybody and welcome back. I'm Michael from EmbodyTheState.com and this video is going to be a great one. It's about an exercise on how to change your beliefs, right? And it's coming from the great Seth. And those of you who watch my content know I talk a lot about Seth throughout my videos over the years, right? And Seth is... Just so you guys know, for a lot of you guys might be hearing about Seth for the first time, right? And some of you might know who they are, but you don't really know about them. So Seth is an entity, right? And when I say entity, right? So we have a human body. And I'm just going to put this into like layman's term just to make it simple, right? Some very diehards might be offended by how I explain this, but trust me, it's just to make it easier for everyone. So we have a human shell. Inside the human shell is what you guys call a soul, Seth prefers the word entity. He says it better describes what we are. But, you know, that entity, it's a, it manifested us. Us being born was the manifestation of that entity. When you die, when you lose this mortal shell, you return to source. In other words, your entity still lives and it returns back to source. You, in other words, you have the same access to God's brain. You have the same intelligence. You have all the answers. You have everything, right? And now imagine that... You have a friend on the other side that is then channeling you information from the other side. It's telling you, okay, you to manifest, you got to do this. And this is how the life actually works. And this is how the universe actually is. And this is who you are, but you don't realize it because in order for you to come to earth, you have to forget all this. That's what Seth is teaching you guys, right? And now imagine having the other side, the intelligence of the almighty being channeled to you, right? It's beautiful. So remember that. And when I say channeled, I don't want you guys thinking like, oh no, it's a possession. This is evil. No. When I say channeled, it just means that uh, when you hear the word channel, it just means that something like you're getting kind of like thoughts, like things given to you, right? But you still have to translate it into your own words, right? And that's what Jane Roberts did. So Jane Roberts is the author, but she she names her stuff, you know, her series called Seth Speaks because it's Seth speaking. He's She's just doing it for him, right? And trust me, goes into detail about so many things. And I will tell you guys before I dive into this, right? I don't want to go on a long tangent and bore you guys to death, but study the greats. Seth is one of them. If you're going to study Seth material, get the nature of personal reality first. It's his first book and read that. It's not 100% about manifesting, but it's a majority that talks about your power, who you are, or what you guys want to call your I am-ness. It, it explains that to the T, right? It gives you a good foundation. You'll start to understand things that are happening in the second book even more with that foundation, okay? And then go to the second book, which is where I'm reading out of, called The Nature of Personal Reality. And that is all about manifestation. That's why I tell you guys, especially my clients, you all have a personal reality. We each have our own individual reality and experiences, right? And that's the beautiful thing about the law. Everything is happening now all at once. And right now, all of you watching this, including myself, we're aware of our reality. Just how I used the law my first week that I discovered it because my life was so crap. I just stumbled upon the law and I was like, let me give this crap a try. In under seven days, business fell in my lap, SP back, game over, right? And, and I just reverse engineered what I did and I applied it moving forward, but I kept studying. And eventually I, I came across you know, uh, books that were telling me pretty much what I did was the way to do it. And I was like, wait a minute, that was so easy. All I did was pretty much every time I thought about my desires, I genuinely just, I guess, play, as Seth would say that you're going to see playfully pretended, right? I believed in that moment that that was my reality. I identified with what I was seeing in here. I wasn't identifying without here, you know, and as I got more experienced and older, I realized, oh my God, okay, so our 3D is just one possible reality that we manifested through our belief system. And even though we're experiencing it and aware of it now, it doesn't mean that we can't change that by changing our awareness of how we feel and view about ourselves, right? Or we view about ourselves in the sense of, if I think of, of my, uh, let's say money, right? If I was trying to manifest money and, and I was broke, my job is when I think about money, I think about what would that look like? Like what world would that look like if I actually had the money? If I actually had like a quarter million dollar car? If I was riding around in, you know, $15,000, $20,000 suits from Savile Row or something, right? And that was like nothing for me. I buy like five at a time, right? How would it feel to have that freedom? How would it feel to drive that car? How would it feel to know that everyone's looking at me? You know, like, damn, this guy made it. And when I start contemplating that, right? 
then I start feeling proud, I start feeling happy, I start feeling relieved and abundant. In that moment, I am identifying with another probable reality that's already existing. Not that it's going to exist, it's already existing. And the way I step into that reality, the way I reflect it, I manifest it, is I gotta start returning to that reality. I gotta start viewing myself as that person. I gotta start feeling it real, the wish fulfilled, right? And when you return to that state over and over again, it becomes who you are, right? And that is the beauty of manifesting and why it's so simple. And that is why I tell all my clients, don't watch a billion different YouTube channels and videos, including mine. Don't don't just watch me as your main you know source of information. And trust me, those of you that discovered me, you're very lucky. I'm telling you because I only teach source material. I don't teach opinions. I don't teach what I think might work best for you. I just teach what the greats taught because in my opinion, nobody alive knows more than them, especially Seth, right? And I'd rather take the word of someone on the other side that has the full access of the creator that has predicted medicine and so many other predictions that which gives validity to what they're what they're saying but i'd rather take their word over anyone else including my own right and that's the thing right i study daily and you guys should be studying and that's why i tell you guys study because when you study and you educate yourselves so you'll be able to understand who is full of it and who is actually teaching from actual source knowledge and is actually teaching the law properly right who who is wasting your time who's going to lead you astray who's going to force you to do effort 24 7 as opposed to just this making decisions over and over which is effortless and fun right remember manifestation is supposed to be fun it's supposed to be enjoyable it's supposed to be simple and it's supposed to be most of all effortless and to an extent as Neville says you don't have to lift a finger but you know we've gone so far from that and that's why I teach the way I teach and that's why I want all you guys to study and I want you guys to educate yourself because I don't want you guys being like a lot of people who ended up in my emails with stories of minimum nine months of zero results, life getting worse, and depression and other mental issues because, you know, they were programmed to do different things. They come to me from all different walks of life, all different advice given to them, and things like that. And they come to me in a sense, you know, it's like, for lack of a better word, damaged, right? And I kind of show them how they should be living and what to do with their mind and just how simple the law is. And let me tell you, every time I get a success story, and you guys have only seen like 5% of them, but every time I get a success story, I smile because it's like I woke up someone else. Like they just realize how easy it is and how they can go teach their friends and, and bring other people to their power. And that's what I love about the law. And that's why I love teaching you guys, right? That's why I make these videos. That's why I'm sitting here recording this right now, okay? So that being said, you know, just remember, study the law take notes, take your time, don't rush it, and just have fun with it. Realize it's not about effort. It's not about setting alarms and forcing yourself to parrot things 24 seven and in the hopes that one day your subconscious magically accepts it, right? In my opinion, right, in comparison to just practicing what's in the books, not mentally healthy. Trust me, I've seen the results of people that do this for years and they end up coming to me and you know, I can't even feel bad because when you know the law on a deeper level to feel bad for someone, you are putting them in a bad state in your reality. So they're going to continue suffering. So that's the thing. I can't even feel bad for you guys because I'm just screwing you over. And that's why I love studying because if I didn't study, I wouldn't know that. And then I'd be pitting you guys. And then I'd be making your lives worse in my reality. And thankfully I know better than that. So that being said, without further ado, I want you guys to just listen in and re and rewind if you need to on certain parts, okay? And just remember, this is supposed to be a fun journey, right? I love all you guys equally. I, I, I wish all you guys the best. And if anyone happens to dislike me, which I don't believe, but if they do, I love you too, okay? So let's get into it. And the first thing, and this is from Nature of Personal Reality, but this is where the lesson is, okay? He explains... There are various ways of altering the belief by substituting its opposite. One particular method is three-pronged. You generate the emotion opposite the one that arises from the belief you want to change. He's explaining, right? When you think about, let's say, your finances, you're manifesting money, and you're broke, and then that makes you feel worried and anxious, right? You can only feel anxious and worried because you have a belief that allows you to feel that, which we'll get into later, right? Every feeling you have is based on a belief that you have. It, it, that's all it is. Every feeling has to be 
attached to a belief. There's no such thing as feeling something and not having a belief. It doesn't work like that. And Seth even explains that your beliefs are, sorry, your feelings, your emotions are a tool for you to trace back to the core belief so that you can change it if you wish to, right? That's the beauty of the law, right? And that's why I love how simple the law is. It's not about effort. It's not about spamming techniques. It's not about forcing visuals. It's not about setting timers and doing all this crazy one hour plus meditations hoping for a better result. It's just about simply making a tweak, which we're going to get into. So he explains, you generate the emotion opposite the one that arises from the belief you want to change. And you turn your imagination in the opposite direction from the one dictated by the belief. In other words, you're thinking about money and you're worried about it. You go to the opposite direction. Same thing, SP. You miss SP and you're worried that they're going to date someone else or have a baby with someone else, blah, blah, blah. Go to the opposite. Go to what you would prefer. And... One second, or was it? At the same time, you consciously assure yourself that the unsatisfactory belief is an idea about reality and not an aspect of reality itself. Remember that. That that I'll reread that again. At the same time, you consciously assure yourself. So you remind yourself, right? Write this down if you need to. You assure yourself that the unsatisfactory belief, that thing that's making you feel bad, that whole "I don't think I can manifest this," "I don't know if this is if this is doable," uh, they're, they're just so much prettier and or handsome than me. Oh, uh, they got more money than me. How is she gonna choose me over him? Or if you're a girl, you're gonna be like, "Oh, she's she's a model, and I'm just an average girl, and I don't have the you know the look she does." And blah, blah, blah. All that is pointless. It's all in your head. It's only true because you believe it's true. It's your awareness that gives life to these things, okay? But it's explaining, you know, uh, at the same time, you consciously assure yourself that, uh, that the unsatisfactory belief is an idea about reality and not an aspect of reality itself. It's not how it's not how your your three D is supposed to be, right? It's 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 not permanent. Your three D is not set up like that. Just remember that it's not about that, right? It's 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 just you're experiencing a an, a belief that you have about reality. But when you start changing that belief, it's going to change. Your your whole th reflection is going to change. Okay. You realize that ideas are not stationary. Emotions and imagination move them in one direction or the other. Reinforce them or negate them. Quite deliberately, you use your conscious mind playfully, creating a game as children do. Keyword, you use your conscious mind playfully. <laughs> Say it out loud. You use your conscious mind playfully. Remember that. Write it down. Use conscious mind playfully. Underline that crap. Put 10 underlines if you need to, okay? <laughs> Quite, and, and, and playfully, creating a game as children do, in which for a time you completely ignore what seems to be in physical terms and pretend that what you really want is real. Focus on that word pretend, guys. That word pretend is very interesting. He's telling you to, in other words, playfully pretend that what you really want is real, right? When I, when I was manifesting my first SP, right? I was broken, I had no money, and she left me because my self-concept was tied to my lack of net worth, my lack of a ability to provide as a man, and I grew up in a culture where the man pays for things, the man should be providing, the man should, should take care of the woman, and you know, I should be you know, taking care of her in all aspects, I should be rubbing her feet and spoiling her, buying her flowers without her asking, like all these things, right? These things are all in my head, but when I was broke, like I knew I should be doing this, I know so many guys don't do this for their girlfriends, and all you guys watching, if you're watching this, buy your woman flowers. If, you, if you're if you lucky enough to have an SP, that's yours already. And, and, and everything is even normal for no reason. Buy her flowers if you haven't already. Surprise her. Get her something sentimental. Take care of her, guys. I'm telling you. Like, be a good person. You know, and be happy that he could afford to do that. Because when I started my journey, I couldn't even afford flowers. Trust me, you know how crappy it felt being able, not being able to buy a woman that you love or a, per, or a person you love if, if you're a woman watching this? that you can't get them even flowers like a, a decent bouquet of flowers on your anniversary like that sucks that hurts so trust me like be grateful if you can do that right now but in my position i couldn't do that i like it hurt me it ate at me so because i couldn't do that it changed how i felt about myself i felt like a failure i felt like i should be doing more with my life i felt like like i, I wasn't good enough for her so that got reflected back to, into my reality. And lo and behold, we broke up. We got into arguments. We started discussing stuff. And then we decided, you know what? We, let's just break up. 
and you know we decided it was for the better and and you know as she said it was it was the, the right person at the wrong time is what she said right and of course no guy wants to hear that but that's what i was dealing with but as seth said when i thought about her i playfully pretended i didn't read seth at the time remember i only read one book of neville which feeling was a secret was the book and then and that's about it right maybe a lecture or two and then i just applied what i what was in those things and little did i know seth was saying the same thing he's i was playfully pretending when i thought about her i playfully pretended i just accepted like a child would in imagination that she was mine like i went to the moment that she gave me a text message that said i, I want to get back with you but i didn't focus on like what it said i didn't even visualize it i just thought about like what would it feel like like if we actually got back together like if instead of being heartbroken and feeling like crap which is what seth's saying take your focus off the belief that makes you feel bad and put it out on the opposite right so Instead of feeling the way I feel, how would I feel if we got back together? How would it feel if we had everything fixed? And I really thought about that. And, the, and when I thought about it, instantly I felt gratitude. That was the first thing I noticed. I felt gratitude, like this, whew, like this relief off my, my shoulders, my chest. And I was like, this must be what the wish fulfilled feels like. Because it makes no sense. I was feeling different a second ago. And all of a sudden, I'm feeling different in a positive way. And this must be what the wish fulfilled is. And this must be what this crazy Neville guy's talking about. And so I, I viewed that as my indicator that I changed my state. And all I did was when I thought about her, I returned to that state in fun, different ways, right? But when I wasn't thinking about her, I just didn't force it. I didn't do techniques. I didn't spam crap. I wasn't parroting anything without feeling it real, right? And thankfully, I didn't, right? And... Instead, I just made sure I didn't go to lack because I knew, hey, wait a minute, it's what I dominantly do is going to become my reflection. So if I'm dominantly just returning to fulfillment and then the times that I'm not doing that, I just refuse to go to lack. In the end of a 24 hour cycle, I've spent more time in fulfillment than in lack. So to me, that was how I did the math in my head. And lo and behold, three days later, I got my SP back. And, and prior to that, three days prior, I, I got my financial success as well. So. I learned very early on the benefits of emotion and feeling and things like that. And that's why I share with you guys, don't be afraid to use your feelings. Don't be afraid to use your emotions, guys. Seth even goes into detail to explain that your emotions accelerate your manifestations, right? There's, as Joe Dispenza talks about, your emotion is what imprints your subconscious mind. It helps you accept things. And I didn't know all that crap. I didn't even know who Joe Dispenza was when I, I learned the law. But as I got older and I studied, I realized all these things these people are talking about, I did them without even like by accident, right? And of course it wasn't accident, it was my higher self, right? And a part of me wonders if I'm supposed to be here to teach you guys and maybe that's why I got quote unquote lucky and I did everything the right way and, and then I was able to experiment and do like all the other techniques and, and try all this other effort stuff and I it sucked, it was the worst years of my life when I tried doing that. But then when I returned back to focusing on who I'm being and who I am as a person and just making that decision over and over and over, results came like crazy and I was like, I gotta teach people this stuff one day. Fast forward years later, I'm here today talking to you guys, right? Working for myself, I answer to no one, I wake up whenever I want, I go to sleep when I want, I have an amazing girlfriend, gorgeous I should say too, and smart, let me tell you, she's so damn intelligent, and sweetie, if you're watching this, I freaking love you, <laughs> and you know, it's like, trust me, I'm living the life, I don't answer to anyone, and she'll tell you, like, I can spend all day with her if I want, and that's the thing, right? it's like, I don't have to answer to anyone. I choose when I fall asleep. I choose when I wake up. I don't have to worry like, oh no, I have a early morning meeting with my boss and, and this and that. And it's okay if you do. It's just, I don't wanna live that way, right? And that's okay if you live that way. I, don't ever feel bad, right? It's better to make a living than to not in my opinion, right? So just remember, it's like the same freedom I have. If you have the same desire that I do to have that freedom, then go for it, guys. I'm telling you, live by the law. Study it thoroughly, okay? But anyway, sorry for the for the, the long rant and the tangent. I'll carry on and, I'll, <laughs> and I'll, I'll give you guys the good stuff. So um, let me just start the last part. It says, for a time you completely ignore what seems to be a fi in physical terms and pretend that what you really want is real. 
if you are poor, you purposely pretend that you have all you need financially. Imagine how you will spend your money. If you are ill, imagine playfully that you are cured. See yourself doing what you would do. If you cannot communicate with others, imagine yourself doing so easily. If you feel your days dark and pointless, then imagine them filled and joyful. Now this may sound impractical, yet in your daily life, you use your imagination and your emotions often at the service of far less worthy beliefs. It's so beautiful. And the results are quite clear. And let me add, unfortunately practical. Like, <laughs> he's so sassy, I love it, right? A little sass in there. As it took a while for the unsatisfactory beliefs to become materialized, remember, he's telling you there's a time delay for the negative just as there is for the positive. Seth, when you study him enough, you'll find where he talks about how, you know, positive emotions come faster, but he also talks about how there's a time delay. Earth is designed like that on purpose so you don't kill yourself you don't hurt yourself so you know you it's like you know the game is i've told some clients but remember the game uh who wants to become a millionaire i think i think is what it's called and you know the, the guy always said like is that your final answer that think of earth like that right it's like you got to keep returning to a state to lock in your answer and that's what you're doing right so just remember that it's kind of like a neat way to look at life right so that time delay is there and it takes time for the negative to come he actually says it takes longer for the negative to come than the positive he says your destructive thoughts actually come a lot uh, take a lot more time to to manifest than than the positive you know cr creative ones right like the good ones the good thoughts the loving thoughts right so he says, as it took a while for the unsatisfactory beliefs to become materialized, so it may be a time before you see physical results. He's telling you, it might be a little bit of time. Hang in there, right? It might be, just like for me, it might be three days. Imagine I did mental diet perfectly one day, and then the next day I'm like, where is it? Right then and there, I would have not gotten my results on the third day, most likely, right? But on day two, I was like, I don't care. I promised myself for a whole month, I'm going to live by the law. I don't give a crap what the 3D says. I'm going to live by this as if I trust that it's true. So on day two, every time I thought of my goals, gave it to myself, no lack. Didn't identify with lack at all. Day three, it all came, it reflected, and then I realized, holy crap, this stuff is real. <laughs> so that being said, uh, you know, he's saying... But the new ideas will take growth and change your experience as certainly as the old ones did. So just how you created the crappy life that you don't like, for some of you that are watching this, right? You can be rest assured that just how you created the current one you're experiencing through your awareness, your beliefs, the good will come as well if you stay aligned, if you stay patient, if you stay in the, you, in other words, in that dominant dwelling state, not meaning you hold it, it means you return to it. You spend more time returning to it, which then creates the habit, which makes it natural, which then reflects, right? And, and it's that simple. So he says the process of, oh, no, that part doesn't matter, but I'm going to read on to the next, uh, there's a couple more pages I want to share with you guys. And it's like, I can't tell you guys like how amazing this content is from like all these grades. That's why I'm so big on studying. That's why I tell all my clients. It's like the le the less you know, the more you should be studying. The less you know, the more you should be kind of focusing on reading page by page, taking notes, and then reflecting how can, how did this, like how does this apply to my life? Think of the bad times, the stuff that happened that, that bothered you, that hurts you. And then look at how you were applying what you're reading, what you're hearing me talk about. And Ask yourself, was I returning to negativity? Was I fearing he was going to cheat or she was going to cheat? Was I fearing that I was going to get fired or this was going to happen? Was I returning to that? Was I believing that more than I was believing the opposite? And you guys will realize, holy crap, I, I, I can see how I engineered this. I created this. And you're going to start realizing these books are the key. It's not some magical, it's not my YouTube channel. I'm not the key. I'm just the guy telling you what the greats are telling you, right? I just study the greats. And, you know, I can only hope to be one of the greats one day, but, you know, it's like, trust me, you guys are covered with these guys. And that's why I tell you guys study, right? And the more you guys study, the more simpler the law is going to become, the more you're going to realize it's not about effort. Manifestation is not about effort at all. Who the hell wants to go around all day forcing techniques, right? That's no way to live, right? Imagine being God, like a creator of everything, the most intelligent thing in the world, being connected to that, and then being like, you know what, I'm going to go to earth, and, and instead I'm going to live like a peasant. 
and, and you just do that. Like, that's crazy, guys. Like, wake up. I'm telling you guys. It's like that saying goes. You guys were, you guys are all kings and queens playing the role of a beggar, but you forgot. You've been a beggar so long that you forgot that you were royalty, right? Remember, it's your birthright to have the things you want. It's your birthright to be successful. It's your birthright to be loved. It's your birthright to be healthy. So remember that when I tell you that, okay? Remember all those things because it all exists. Everything is existing now at once. So just how you're aware of this crappy 3D reality that you want to change, something in it you want to change, start being aware of those other realities that are just as alive as this one, but in order to experience them, you have to start identifying with those. You got to step into those. You got to go from here to there, and you got to just whoop, like step in like that, and just left to right, A to B. And the more you practice doing that, and then you observe your 3D as just the old you, because you weren't changing yourself. So therefore, it led you to this because your beliefs created this. But now that you're changing yourself, you're practicing returning to different beliefs, right? You're swapping out your beliefs, just as Seth is teaching, right? You're, you're, you're going to the opposite. So you're focusing on the bad. Now you realize you're focusing on it. Now go to the opposite. How would it feel if that was true, right? Playfully pretend that that's your reality and feel the results of it. And that's all you're doing. And I'm telling you, your life will change, okay? So before I let you guys go, I want to read you guys one last little, sorry, but I just kicked my light. I want to read you guys one last little, uh, it's like a page, a page and a half. So trust me, this, this is going to blow your mind. So it says, your beliefs generate emotion. And I tell you guys this all the time. I tell you guys, you cannot have a, a feeling without a belief attached to it. Think of it like this. It's like, if you feel wealthy, when you think about having money, right? If you feel like a millionaire or billionaire, whatever the hell you want, but whatever that feels like, that abundance to you, when you feel that, it's not because it's coming from nowhere. It's because in that moment, you have inserted a key and you've turned it. And when you turn that key, it, the door opens, a chest opens, and out comes all that, that comes with it, right? And think of it like that. So it's that simple, right? Your beliefs generate emotion. It is somewhat fashionable to place feelings above conscious thoughts. The idea being that emotions are more basic and natural than conscious reasoning is. The two actually go together, but your conscious thinking largely determines your emotions and not the other way around. That's so amazing. Your beliefs generate the appropriate emotion that is implied. A long period of inner depression does not just come upon you. Your emotions do not betray you. Instead, over a period of time, you have been consciously entertaining negative beliefs that then generated the strong feelings of despondency. If emotion could be trusted above conscious reasoning, then there would be little point in aware thought at all. You would not need it. You are not at the mercy of your emotions either, for they are meant to follow the flow of your reasoning. Your mind is meant to perceive the physical environment clearly, and its judgments about the environment then activate the body's mechanisms to bring about the proper response. That's so beautiful. I love it. And it's saying, if your beliefs, if your beliefs about existence are fearful, then the emotional reactions will be those leading to stress. Your own value judgments need examination in such a case. Your imagination, of course, fires your emotions and it allows your beliefs faithfully. As you think, so you feel and not the other way around. Later, we will have some comments regarding hypnotism. Here, let me mention that in those terms, you hypnotize yourself constantly with your own conscious thoughts and suggestions. Like, it's, it's so, that's so wonderful. Like, I love reading, it's just so simple and it just gives it to you raw. Like, you know, it's like, we're, it's up to us to consciously look at our 3D and we can still decide what we believe true. We can look at our 3D and realize this is something I created and Yes, I'll take credit for it. Even if I don't know how I did it, I'll take credit for it because I understand my beliefs reflect my outer world, right? And now that I know this, I understand, hey, if I start putting my beliefs on having the things that I don't have yet physically, I understand that eventually my beliefs are going to swap dominantly. In other words, I'm going to have a dominant belief opposite of my present reality, and then that is going to reflect, right? It's what, it's what I did, right? That's why you'll hear some people say like, oh, you just, you have to experience it now, and it has to be now, and blah, blah, blah. And, and everything is now, so, you know, there, there's, there's no such thing as it coming from the future, but 
you know, some people, it's like, it helps to understand, like the way I looked at it in my journey was, hey, I'm doing this thing and because I'm doing it properly, eventually the 3D is going to be experienced differently in my future timeline as a human, not as entity, right? So I understood that, yes, today, this 24 hours might be a little, you know, crappy, but who's to say tomorrow won't be better? Who's to say day three won't be better? I had no clue that on the day three, I would get my manifestations. I had no clue, right? For either of them, right? I just had faith. I knew that it was going to happen. I just didn't know when. And I knew that it was just a matter of when I changed my beliefs. So I kept returning to the state because I looked at my conscious and I saw lack i saw my girlfriend wasn't my sorry my ex-girlfriend wasn't texting me and, and you know because at the time i wanted her to be my girlfriend right at the time i wanted her to be you know mine and i wanted her you know us to be together again and i knew i had to start viewing her as my girlfriend i had to start viewing her as my woman again right not as the one i'm trying to get so when i thought of her i went to how would it feel if i had her already if in this moment right now i got confirmation that we're back together how would i genuinely feel and by doing that i was identifying with the unseen with those realities that are just as alive as this present one right now i was identifying with those other realities just because i couldn't see him doesn't mean that they're not you know existing i knew that they're existing within me and because they're existing within me i'm choosing to reach up in the sky and pick them out and bring heaven to me in other words i'm bringing heaven on earth right and as reverend ike says I, I, I don't recall reading that you have to die to go to heaven, but I do recall reading in scripture that you can bring heaven onto you on earth. And that's what I'm doing. I, every, every time I thought about her, I brought heaven onto earth. Every time I thought about money, I brought heaven onto earth to myself. I dragged that crap down. I said, enough is enough. If I'm the creator and I create my, my, my reality through my beliefs, then I'm going to start believing I have the financial security where I can answer to no one and I can buy what I want. I can live the way I want. I can wake up and go to sleep whenever I want. That's it, right? And, and you know, my girlfriend, yeah, you know, as I mentioned, right, she'll tell you that I, I, I am so flexible. I can always change things, right? I'm never worried. I'm always taking care of her. You know, I provide for her you know, whatever she needs. And I love her. And that's what I do for the woman I love. Right. And, you know, that is granted to me that freedom because I discovered the law many years ago, because I made mistakes. I made more mistakes than all you guys could even imagine. Trust me. That's why I'm sitting here in front of this camera talking so confidently. Trust me. I've been there. I've been there, done that. And I'm telling you what I'm teaching from the books is the truth. I, I wish I I had the intelligence or it's not even to say that I'm dumb, to be honest. It's just I, I it would be great if I was able to create a, a magical method that is going to override everything ever written in history. I, but it's not like that. Right. And I'm OK with that. I don't I don't have you know, my ego is not worried about that. Right. But I know that this stuff can change your life in days. It can change your life in weeks. It can change it in a month, guys. Okay? So that being said, you know, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was inspirational. If you guys made it this far and you haven't hit the like button, all I ask is hit that like. And, you know, I'm always here for you guys if you ever need me. I wish you guys all the best. I love you all very much. You guys are my family and I'm going to keep bringing out content. And if you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed these teachings and you want some more Seth stuff, let me know. I plan to do way more in the future. So this was a good introduction to Seth. And I can't wait to talk more about other greats and more content about Seth. So that being said, I love you all very much. Have yourself a wonderful evening, a wonderful morning, or a wonderful night, depending where you are. And remember, guys, when you free yourself internally, you're going to change your life, right? And you have to remember that always. It's all about up here, what you're doing in here, right? Don't be fooled by what's out there. I love you all, guys, and have yourself a wonderful day or night.